my team, we're working on research and innovation, and we're looking at three objectives. The first objective is to look at research priorities, to ensure and look at how countries are setting their research priorities for antimicrobial resistance and healthcare associated infections. It's important that knowledge gaps are identified so that the strategic research agendas and the resources that are out there can be committed to, uh, to do research to fill those knowledge gaps. The second objective is to look and to see once we've done that research, how do we ensure that that research is informing policy making? Since we've paid for it, we need to utilize the research to make sure that it's actually uh, used to its fullest. And the last agenda is there's been a lot of work uh, ongoing about incentives. Um, and so what we're doing is we're trying to look at the work that's been performed in the UK, in Europe, in the US, and by, the Germany, by Germany through the G20 um, regarding how to stimulate antibiotic innovation, how to ensure access to older antibiotics, and how to ensure that there's effective infection prevention control for animals, um, and to look at the incentives. Um, and what kind of political willingness and barriers are in place in order to implement some of these incentives. Uh, in the research and innovation team, we are responsible for trying to foster innovation and research across Europe. So uh, basically our work uh, is to try to identify way to facilitate um, well, the appropriation of research gap uh, for policymakers, for instance, uh, in the implementation of national plan. Uh, we're also actively working at visiting countries to uh, check their appetite uh, when it comes to incentive. In the General Assembly, uh, what we presented were the results regarding research priorities. What we've done is we've looked at countries' national action plans to determine um, where the research um, priorities lie. Um, we've done a mapping and we've looked across the various important strategic research agendas and identified a gap. There seems to be a large gap in the fact that infection prevention and control research priorities are largely neglected. Now, infection prevention and control can have a huge impact on, um, on combating antimicrobial resistance. So it's very important that even though that many people think that there's not a lot of research that's necessary for infection prevention and control, they think it's all hand washing, but actually there are gaps there. Um, and so what we've done is we've got a, the research gaps uh, listed and what we're doing now is we're vetting that and we're trying to include it into um, various important uh, strategic research agendas. We're going to disseminate it and look to see how we can ensure that this important research is being financed. One interesting thing is that we made a survey uh, we uh, address to uh, IPC professional and from that survey one really interesting result uh, was that for them the main critical research is issue was to identify gaps and barriers related to the implementation of IPC uh, and measures to prevent um, the, the dissemination of healthcare infection. And really interestingly, uh, this is exactly what the Joint Action is doing. We are actively working on identifying those barriers, uh, gaps and the facilitating factors uh, that could help in our fight against AMR. So I think that in that way the Joint Action is doing what is needed. So my take home messages uh, for the General Assembly uh, would be that when you want to face a challenge, a big challenge like AMR, you have to work together to, to meet and to exchange face to face in order to foster changes. One of the huge strengths of the JAMRI is that you get all of these individuals from the different disciplines within the room. Um, and that allows to have, you to have conversations that really don't happen in other settings. Well, in one year, we expect that the legacy of EU JAMRI will be to have uh, implementable actions. So there should be some very concrete and tangible actions that come forward through uh, the European Commission, the EU and the member states. 
Um, specifically, what we're looking to is, is to understand, um, we're, we're looking at specific actions to secure um, access to older antibiotics. Um, we want to try to get some sort of collaboration in place. We want to have greater transparency um, and um, really also uh, help some countries to understand where they could be using some older antibiotics, so as, as an example. I think our legacy will be the network we built. We built a network with stakeholders, uh, with policymakers, with uh, veterinarians, as professional, and I think this network will uh, carry on. And I think this is, well, one of the main achievements of the joint action.